<laughs> you must be tired. You really move a lot when you play, hey? I do. <laughs> awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here. Very, very special lesson with Mr. Casey Cooper himself, also known as Cooper Drummer. Thank you so much for coming out, man. Such a pleasure. Now, so those of you who don't know Casey, which you know, I don't think there's very many of you here that may don't know him. He's uh, he he. Uh, you're originally from Texas. Now you live in Atlanta, and you kind of got your start by putting up vid putting up videos on YouTube. Now you have almost I think it's almost seven hundred thousand subscribers. I think it's six little close. Six seventy five or something. One hundred and twenty six million YouTube views, which is crazy, and uh, and over seven hundred and fifty videos. That's yeah. pretty crazy, man. Yeah. So uh, if you guys haven't seen any of his stuff, I really recommend you just check it out. It's at Cooper Drummer and change the E's to threes. Why? That's correct. Why change the E's to three? Well, when I started out, I just wanted people to be able to find me. And yeah. you know, if you're searching for drummer and I'm just starting out, no one's going to find me. So I thought I'd be like a five-year-old and change the E's to threes. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's not just covers on your YouTube channel. You have like collaboration videos. You have performance videos, like marching bands, you play in churches, you, you do orchestras, and, and lots of other kind of cool stuff. So. Yeah, trying to mix it up. Yeah, so guys, you guys definitely check out his YouTube channel, follow him on Twitter, at Cooper Drummer, and, uh, and this shirt, you gotta tell us about the shirt. So, my friend uh, Josh Harris likes yeah. to post on my Instagram, you play drums, question mark, because it's always apparent that I play drums, for the most part. Right. And so it became like a uh, sort of a inside joke that turned into people, other posting, people, other people, other people posting it. Yeah. And so eventually I was like, I need a shirt. And I was like, that's really cool because it's a conversation starter. Like you see this right. shirt, you're like, do you play drums? Right. Or I play drums, so like I want to talk to you, you know? Cool. Yeah, something to kind of like socially bring people together who yeah. have similar interests. Very much so. Cool, man. Um, so for those of you who are new to Drumeo, we do this sort of thing uh, every day. And with, with a different instructor every day almost, not almost, we do it every day with a different instructor. And uh, I'd love for you guys to try it out. So you can go to drumio.com forward slash trial. You can try it free for 30 days. You get unlimited access for the first 30 days and, and you can kind of get a feel for what we do based on this lesson. If you like this, hopefully you'll, you'll uh, try some more. So before we get started, I want to really reward all of you who came out to watch us live, to watch Cooper Drummer yeah. Casey Cooper, what do I call you? Uh, just call me Cooper. Cooper. Okay. To watch Cooper uh, play, we wanted to give away some. Let's do some T-shirts, some Drumio T-shirts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw you out. I'm going to throw you like three names, okay. and you got to choose one of them. You got to be the bad guy here. All right. Okay. So C P Trocky eight three nine Diego dot Ficka or Captain Bob. Captain Bob. That's Captain Bob, okay. Captain, Captain Bob. Bob. Great Drumio student. You made a good choice there. Up in, he's up from in Alaska. Great oh. guy. Thank I'm, you for I'm, watching, Captain I'm Bob. I'm going to hit you with this, Taylor. Go to, Kyle, go to that camera. Go to Taylor's camera. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> okay. Hey, stop posting in the chat, everyone. Um, Holy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to choose from that. Okay, so this is next one. Um, it, oh, and by the way, Captain Bob, you can just email me, jared at drumio.com. So next one, Braun, Jenna Drummer, or Hurricane? Braun? Man, Hurricane, that's, that's so awesome. Hurricane, the man. Yeah, uh, Hurricane, just, uh, which his name is Brian. Uh, okay. Uh, we, we know Brian. So go ahead and email me, Brian, jared at drumio.com. Nice username. <laughs> and every time I do, every time I do any sort of uh, giveaways, the chat goes like this, oh, which yeah. um, makes no sense because I'm not actually choosing anyone from the chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Cooper. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about how to learn songs quickly, and this yeah. is a really, really interesting topic. When we were discussing that we wanted to do something like this, um, I really like this idea because. It seems that you publish so much content on your YouTube channel, and it seems like you, you publish covers, you publish, like we said, performance videos, mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff, and it seems like you're always learning new material. Yeah. And so everyone has their own kind of method when it comes to learning a new song, and I really kind of wanted to get your feedback for myself and for all the awesome Drumio students and the, the, the Cooper Drummer fans <laughs> out there. Well, I'm very excited to share. Cool. Uh, I definitely uh, spend a lot of time learning stuff. In fact, 
the, uh, all the songs I'm playing today, mm -hmm. all the, some of the other stuff I'm doing in the next couple of weeks, all these shoots and everything, I had to learn before I came, yeah. of course, it makes sense. So all of that I applied these strategies to, and cool. so, so I got them learned. <laughs> awesome. Okay, and before we get into that, we want to play one more song, right? Sorry, I kind of, I kind of got off track here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Let's so just so you guys know, all the songs that uh, Cooper has chosen to play, they're all Drum You Edge play-alongs. So if you sign up for that free trial, you could actually go in and play, get the drumless versions of all these. There's versions with click track and without click track, so you can kind of like put your own groove to it after watching uh, what Cooper's doing here on the version. So this next one's called Big Band of Funk, and the first one is called Disturbing, which is a play along, and that, that song was actually written by uh, Nate Savage, really oh, good nice. guitar player, friend of ours. Yeah. So. Okay, cool, let's go Big Band of Funk. Again. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, a little bit. Cool, man. So let's talk about the process of uh, learning songs. I know I have my kind of methodology that I do because I've played a lot of uh, cover gigs, like wedding gigs and, and stuff like that. And uh, when you're telling me uh, your methodology, I thought it was really, really interesting because there's similarities yeah. between what I do and what, what you do. But um, I think it's really, really valuable stuff. And so mm. let's go for it. Let's do it. Okay, yeah, when we uh, started <laughs> talking about it on the phone, we actually talked about some of the same things matching up there. And so when yeah. I wrote it out, I could tell which ones like we definitely do together. Yeah. Now, there's a five part process that I put together here. Mm -hmm. Trying to talk to the camera. <laughs> um, five part process. And so it starts out with the title, Learn to Listen. I tried to come up with a memorable lesson and a name for each segment. And so Learn to Listen is the first one. And it's all about casual, and active listening. Now, the important part is the active listening. So if you don't have time for casual listening, then it's okay. Just do the active listening. Now, the difference between the two here, first is casual listening, and that's basically like if you have free time to listen to the songs when you're doing something. So say you're mowing the lawn, or you gotta drive somewhere, or you gotta set up your drum set. Just put the song on, or the songs on, and let them play. And so at that point, when you have them playing, you kind of hear things like listening to some of these songs the other day and I was like, oh, there's a cut there. Like, that's cool. I should probably 
think about that when I'm playing the song. So you can pick up some stuff without actually taking the time to really focus on it. You're just using your extra time. Right, so just kind of have it on the background. So it's almost like subconsciously uh, you're going to start to memorize things without even like uh, being really deliberate about it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's really, it's about <laughs> yeah. feeling it out without being there right. or like, focusing on it. Now the second part, and this is the more important part because it's what you really need to do, is active listening. And that's when you take the song, put it in your ears, put it in your stereo, sit down, put your phone away, put your internet away, focus on the track. Mm -hmm. And so this is when you're really just listening through it. And one thing that I really feel is important about this step is understanding and like knowing the song. Because mm -hmm. like the way it's supposed to be played and the way that you need to the nuances into the song itself and like, is this a rock song? Is this a country song? Is this like, how do I need to approach it? How do I need to think about it? Mm -hmm. And so that's a really important thing to just feel the way it was originally done if you're trying to, to recreate it. Now, if you're doing it your own way, <laughs> then you don't need to feel it as much. You need to feel it in your own way. But right. other than that, you want to kind of just dig in, enjoy it, get, get a feel for it, and really have fun listening to it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I know for, for me, I will like, um, what did you call it, the first one? Casual listening. Casual listening. I'll casual listen to songs, like I'll put it all on a playlist, and then I'll casual listen for like a week before the gig, and then before, then right like the night before it ever, I actually go through and I have to active listen, like, okay, I better get that ending. <laughs> yeah, or, or exactly. That. Yeah, that sort of stuff. And um, it, it definitely takes more patience, mm -hmm. and it takes having that attention span yeah. to be able to sit through, really listen through that whole song, and then kind of go back through the song and, and actually like understand everything that's going yeah. on. But that, that's cool, man. My, my difficulty with the active listening is sometimes <laughs> I'll have my phone or I'll have my computer, I'll check a YouTube comment, and I'll, I'll have the song on and then it turns yeah. back to casual listening because you don't catch everything when it's casual. You may understand it, you may catch it a little bit, but you don't know for a fact exactly everything that's happening. Because right. so, so that's that's great. cool, man. Awesome, okay, so the next one after that, <coughs> excuse me, what do you got? The next one is called Get the Groove. Okay. Now this is something that you're kind of doing while you're active listening, but it's something that you need to sit down and do behind a kit. Mm -hmm. You can active listen anywhere, but you can't practice anything anywhere. So right. Get the Groove is learning the important parts of the song. So say um, you listen to a track, and there's the verse groove, there's a chorus groove, mm -hmm. there's a bridge groove, maybe there's a breakdown groove if you're listening to metal. Those things are the really important meat of the song. If you yeah. can't play those, you can't play the song. Yeah. Like there's no way to really go to a gig and even fake your way through a song if you don't know the meat and potatoes. Right. Like if I was to play that last song that I just did yeah. and just play some of those grooves that I did without any of the fills, without any of the extra stuff, it would have been fine. It's still yeah. a performance of the song and it would have grooved and if you're not the most important part during the show, it's okay to just know the meat and potatoes if that's like all that you have to have. So this part is like, really important to get. Yeah, yeah, learn the meat and potatoes uh, of the song. That's cool. And so is it, I guess that's something you do with all of these songs mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, you know? even, even when there isn't drums to it, like with these drumless tracks, mm -hmm. um, I'm actually taking them and I'm like listening and I'm writing the meat and potatoes. So I get the grooves first. I don't concentrate on the fills, I don't concentrate on the rolls, I don't concentrate mm -hmm. Like there's the, uh, in that one we just played, uh, Big Band of Funk, there's the bum bum bum, right. that kind of stuff. I don't practice that right off the bat because that takes a mastery of the groove before you get into that section. Just quickly, do you, do you mind, maybe we can get um, Victor to cue up the track and you can kind of play it, try and play it through as you were first getting the groove. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, let's Is do it. Is that possible? So Victor, possible. Do, do you mind just, I guess you can run it from the top. That song he just played, Big, Big Band, Band of Funk. Is that possible, by the way? Okay. You guys, the real rock stars are behind the cameras. Yeah. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Kyle, Mr. Victor, and Mr. Dave. <laughs>
just left out all of the little shots and all the little intricate parts and just kind of grew. Mm. Yeah, because, cool. I mean, as a drummer, all that other stuff is just extra. It's yeah. not necessary. Like, I'm doing it a lot because I'm here performing for people who want to see me play drums. Yeah. If you're playing a live gig, what I just did is almost more what you need to be doing than all the extra fills and stuff. Now, some of the cuts, the da-da and the eh, 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 some of those punches you'd want to do live, but other yeah. than that, you know. Right, the, the massive flurry of herders around the drum set <laughs> and hand to feet <laughs> combinations isn't a necessity, you're saying? Not totally necessary. <laughs> That's cool, man. Okay, what do you got next for us? All right, let me go that back I to took me. you away from your notes. Yeah, I was just trying to show the, uh, the layout there. You've done a lot of work. The book's almost full. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I wrote probably like 25 pages it's great, the other day. Right? All right, so the next one <laughs> is, uh, pardon the cheesy title here, it's uh, Jump In and Jam. And so I wanted something memorable, you can remember that, it's almost right. like jumping in a pool except you're jumping in the song. Um, so Jump In and Jam is go ahead, after you've gotten the groove, after you've gotten the, um, after you've listened to it a little bit and you've gotten a feel for the song and everything, Jump In and Jam is kind of something that you do while you practice the groove too because yeah. you're playing a song. But the focus of this section is to just play through the track. Have fun with it, enjoy it, feel out the track, get yeah. your style for it, get your, um, your feel for how it should be played. And don't worry about mistakes, because at this phase you're not performing. You can do this and practice and have fun with it and get, get into it yeah. at your house. And if you make a mistake, say you play the verse, you're like playing the verse and then you go too long, you don't stop the track start back over from the beginning, yeah. because at this point you don't know the song well enough to necessarily make it all the way through perfectly yet. If you do, you don't even really need to do the rest of the steps because you've, you've already got the song. But yeah. um, at this point, play through the song and say you go too long in the verse, just keep going. And really, it allows you to feel out those grooves. It allows you to, like, if you noticed when I was playing a second ago, mm -hmm. I actually missed some of the stuff I meant to hit because I was in a totally different mindset of just like, lay down the groove, feel it out, get, yeah. get used to it. And so at this point, that's what you're doing is just working on everything. You don't, like, the, the things you don't focus on so much anymore are, like, the fills. Like, say you're learning a classic song, and it's got these exact fills that you have to learn. Yeah. Jump in and jam, you don't have to play the exact fills. You have to know there's a fill there. You have to be the groove here and be able to play the groove afterwards, but you don't have to know exactly what those fills are yet. Right. I know uh, one, one guy, I think the first guy I heard it one is from one of our drumming instructors named Kyle Radomski. And he, when he spoke about songs, he spoke about them uh, as like a moving train. Mm -hmm. And so just because you, you make a mistake doesn't mean in, in you fall off the train. The train keeps going. Yeah, it has so to. you need to just get back on and, and keep going. The song doesn't stop. And so That's another great thing about that part is that if you practice recovery, if you practice recovery skills in that jump in and jam section, yeah. if you do that live, say you forget that you go into the verse here. If you do that live, you can't stop and start over. So you yeah. have to you can also practice those recovery and just knowing like, oh hey, here I am in the song, here's mm -hmm. where I need to be, I can fix it. And that, so that helps with recovery skills and it helps with your ability to uh, start feeling out and learning the song. Yeah, that's cool, man. All right, what do you got next? Next is number four, of course, and uh, <laughs> that would be Ready the Roadmap. And this yeah. is one when we were talking, just like the active listening, you mentioned roadmap. Mm -hmm. And I like that terminology because you can call it a roadmap, you can call it a guideline, you can call it the, the flow or the actual movement of the track, where it goes. Yeah. And what this is all about is the exact progression of what you're trying to learn. So verse is uh, either, you could say, like it depends on how you learn songs, how you want to talk about it. Sometimes I talk about measurements in time as in like, the verse is 20 counts. Yeah. That, that's just five measures, so that's a short verse. But say, you can count it out like that, you can say it's like 20 measures, you can say it's 20 <coughs> counts, right. or you can do it in uh, chord progressions. Mm -hmm. or rotations is what I like to do. So like I'm listening to a song, and it's something that doesn't necessarily come naturally. It may not be something that you can feel yet yeah. um, as, a, as a newer drummer. But for me, when I play a song, I feel every rotation. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can like feel a phrase, the, like a musical yeah. phrase. And so yeah. you feel the end of that phrase. So sometimes I'll be like, all right, the verse is two rotations. So that means I'm going to play through that groove four times as a rotation. I'm going to play through that eight times altogether, but right. two rotations. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I always would, um, 
Uh, th that's a great way, which I've never actually done it that way, even though maybe subconsciously I do it, but I always do the way where I write out the amount of measures. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, the verse is however many measures, 20, 18. But what I found sometimes is they t certain songs tag on like an extra bar or whatever, mm -hmm. like a build or something yep. to a bridge, and it's really hard when you're counting measures or phrases, it's really hard to feel that, and so that mm -hmm. kind of takes like an added level of documentation. And something. see, that's, that's the, the cool thing about the, the roadmap section of this is that you can do it mentally, which you need to have it mentally because when you're when you're live, you're not necessarily going to be able to have it any other way. Yeah. But you also, which we're taught, like writing something out will help you remember it anyway. But for me, when I'm really trying to learn songs super quickly, like these songs and stuff, and I have to learn them on the spot really fast, yeah. I write out everything. I write out a layout of the song. Now, I've got some of those here. <laughs> I don't know if we can cut to a... Uh... Yeah, we can go to the... There's a camera right beside you. Okay. Or we can hold it up to the overhead cam. Or, uh, uh, actually, our man Taylor here. Taylor. Okay. So, I've got uh, my, my write-ups right here. You, you won't be able to read it because my handwriting is literally atrocious. <laughs> I feel bad for anyone that actually has to read it. But I write it down, and up at the top section here is count-outs of each section. Um, like for, this is for the disturbing playthrough, it says eighth note punch choruses, so that's, um, that's the, uh, the intro there where it's like do cha do do cha, it's like do 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 do, that's like eighth notes, uh, one and two and, um, one and two and cha do 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 cha do do cha do do cha do one and two and, and so I write in little memorable things that remind me of the groove into this section here and I do a breakdown in small print because that's something that I can, I can read when I'm thinking about it and when I'm writing it. And then at the bottom here, I've got a bigger version of everything that literally just shows, um, says just intro, then break. Yeah. So I remember there's a break. Then it's verse, and then it's verse with kick. So I know that the first verse, I wasn't gonna play a lot of kick in it. Yeah. Um, I think I changed my parts a little bit from when writing this. But then this two, next two rotations of the verse, they have, they have kick. Mm -hmm. And so I do that with every song, and I write the bigger section there because when I'm playing, like when I'm working through them, I can actually look over at this and remind myself. That way I can get a couple of good runs, build my confidence playing a song with this here, yeah. and then eventually take it away. That way I have to know it in my head. Huh. Or you can take it with you to a gig if you have the luxury of having music. And this is a lot easier than writing out sheet music because you aren't writing out the exact beats and everything you're playing. You're just writing out an outline. It's kind of like taking notes in school. You take notes on the song. Yeah, that's cool. Really cool. That's similar to what I do. I, I call it like a little cheat sheet. But I'm sure everyone has their like their own way, just like you kind of yeah. have there. Make little notes about adding extra kick drums or taking certain kick drums away. Mm -hmm. Now that's for obviously a part that you're creating. If yeah. you're if you're creating a chart or any sort of roadmap for a song that I've got that too. You do. Yeah. Okay. My, um, um, so this is a song like a cover? Is, do yes. you do that for your covers when you, you learn them on, for YouTube or do you just no. like... Usually for that I'm playing at home yeah. and so I'm doing, a lot of times I'll do one video a day so I can just focus on that video. Yeah. Now I had to learn a bunch of different songs for the next couple of weeks. I'm, we're doing some here yeah. and then um, I'm doing some in a shoot down in Florida and so I have to learn all these songs in addition to the ones I was writing the parts for for Dromeo. Right. So um, I've got write outs here. Um, I'm, I'm giving away uh, a cover here by saying this, but um, uh, this is a um, write-up for the song American Idiot by Green Day, um, which is just a blazing fun song. Right. Um, and so this is using someone else's drum part. Now I do change up things a little bit sometimes for what I want to do. This is the kind of song where I wouldn't change it up too much because the drumming is so iconic and so right. well written that there's not much for me to add. It's more so just like playing and having fun with the, the parts that are there. Right. But the same general thing, I've got the, the long list of, of everything, like drum punch intro, um, where it, it says like guitar intro, so the guitar comes in, um, and then I punch in, so it, I remind myself that I have a drum punch intro, yeah. and I do that three times. Um, so it's like right. So like a punch in. Then I've got all the different listings here of like chorus groove, um, that's after the tom transition. Right. So it's like, it's got those different segments there. And it's the same kind of thing. Sometimes I'll actually write out a little note beside it that has the sticking or it has the uh, pattern in actual mm -hmm. uh, music notation for a certain part. 
But I don't always do that. It's only when I like really, maybe I don't think of it right off the top of my head, you know. Yeah. Cool, man. Okay, so the last one, point number five. Yes. Point number five is one of the most important if you're trying to do like a exact representation of a song or, I mean, of course, if you're doing a performance and it matters that you hit everything that's in a song yeah. originally. Mm -hmm. And this one is called Polish the Product. And so the focus of this is taking everything that you learned for the first four steps, going back to the first step, active listening, which throughout this procedure, you need to go back to active listening and casual listening if you have the opportunity. Now, if you're trying to learn a song in an hour, um, you may not be able to go back to casual listening, but um, sometimes when I learn songs for churches, sometimes I learn songs for like, uh, for like these trips and stuff, I'll work on the song for a little bit, then I'll have to go somewhere. So then I put it back to casual listening. Mm -hmm. I go back to active listening when I'm in the car. Sometimes I even try and focus a lot on the song when I'm in the car, which, I mean, keep your eyes on the road. Don't, don't focus too much. Yeah, don't focus too much. <laughs> oh, but you go back to that active listening and you go through, and using all the knowledge you have now, you find the most um, important parts, since you, you know those, you play those, mm -hmm. but you go in and you focus on the last pieces that you're missing. Mm -hmm. So say you're doing a cover of a Rush song. Like that, that's a good one to, to point out because there's so many things to polish in a Rush cover. Mm -hmm. Whether you play it live, whether you're playing a drum cover on YouTube, whether you're um, playing it with a band, if you're trying to recreate Neil Peart's parts, you better polish the product because <laughs> his parts are just so detailed and intricate. In fact, sometimes there's things that like you may not hear right off the bat. There's a few times where I've gone back and watched some of his videos and some of his performances where he's doing things you can't even really hear on the track. Yeah. So depending on how polished you want it, this is where you go in and you focus on things like dynamics, you focus on things like uh, the fills, replicating fills that may be in the song, or like if you're doing a drum cover like what I do, I either have to play the original fill because the, the drumming is going on in the song still, so I'm playing over that, or I have to play something on top of that that covers up what the original drummer is doing. Yeah. So this is where you focus on those different segments, you focus on just everything and make it yours or make it the original. Yeah. And that's, that's where it really like, you have to decide which one you need to do. But if you have to make it yours, then that's where you add your own flavors to it. You really spice it up with what is yours. But if you want it the original, that's where you focus on the flavors that are there and you really make sure that you're getting the original concepts and flavors in the way it's supposed to come through. Yeah, cool. What takes you, what, or what do you prefer when it, when it comes to like, do you prefer writing your own parts or do you prefer trying to, I mean, even with covers, like, mm. do you prefer writing your own parts or, or just learning exactly what's there? I like to learn the original grooves. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of that. I really enjoy like learning what these guys work so hard to write and made so iconic. Like, right. I mean, you don't take Tom Sawyer by Rush and then don't, don't play them. <laughs> Yeah, that, you, don't, that. you don't mess that up. You do, you need to go home and like, but fills and stuff, like <coughs> a lot of times, I mean, I don't do a lot of covers of songs like that because I don't like to mess with someone's work, yeah. but I don't prefer to play exactly what someone else has written because to me, I'm not creating anything and I'm trying to always create. I'm trying to always come up with my own parts, my own little fills, my own little things to add in and make right. it mine. And if it's an iconic drum part like Neil Peart's, I can't make it mine without kind of messing it up. Yeah. So I prefer to, to write my own stuff and to do songs that a lot of times have room for me to do things that I want to do that, that right. are cool. We were talking about that the other day when I asked you, like, you know, what is the, some of the videos that re you feel really got you started and you were talking mm -hmm. about all the, the dubstep yes. videos. And that's something where there's obviously programming, mm -hmm. not, not real drums, and so you could add, then layer stuff on oh, top yeah. of that and it really complements the music. It was a lot of fun for those. Like, you just, I mean, yeah. Especially one of the things I like to do with that kind of music is convert that dubstep into uh, percussion sounds. Yeah. So like say it goes So it's like do do cha hit the china and then it's like cha 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 on like a, a splash or a transformer yeah. or something like that where I'm trying to recreate the, the changes in pitch and the changes in, yeah. in style. That's cool, man. That's great. I, I, like I said, I love hearing other people's uh, the way that they approach this sort of thing and and yeah you, you think oh five step you know process to learn songs is this quicker or should, is there something where there's three steps or two steps and I think yeah I, I think that's you know that's not the point the point is that um, when you go into approach and learning a new song you, 
you really need to try and follow some sort of formula. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, I, I mean, I've done so many studio sessions and I, I remember being in the studio session and I'll just be like, okay, I'll just try and like listen to the song and then play it. But when I, then I start making mistakes and then uh, they're like, oh, you know, I'm wasting studio time. Mm -hmm. So then I go out and actually start writing it out, yeah. like you said, the roadmap, uh, and then go into the, the little bit of the, the polishing stage. And then it's like two takes and it's done. That's mm -hmm. always the way it is. It's always, it always happens way quicker once you have all these pieces and all the preparation done. See, I, I get caught myself. I'll get lazy and I'll yeah. just casually listen to the song and I won't sit down and do my homework and like write out a part and like yeah. actively listen. So I'll get in there and I'll start trying to play it. And I'll get really frustrated because I'll miss these like things that right. have to be there. Like sometimes I even try and do a cover before I know it well enough to do a right. cover. Yeah. And then I end up just doing extra takes because I didn't take the time to, to actually quickly and efficiently get everything out of the song that I need to. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, let's give away a pair of sticks. And don't post in the chat, everyone, because that's not how I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Should we give away that pair of sticks? Yes, we should give okay. away this pair of sticks. So uh, choose these three names. Jefferson Morales, Morales uh, Ben28470, or Andrew DM. Ben 28470. 28470. Two ben 28470. Email me, jared at drumeo.com. You're going to get a, a pair of uh, Cooper sticks here. Cool. Um, so we want to play a few more songs. Let's do it. That's all right. And, and so if you guys do have any questions about this, after we get through these songs, we're going to get to the questions. Uh, for those of you who are here watching live, right below the, the video player, you'll see submit a question box. Just go ahead and click that, type in your question, hit submit. We are, we're going to get to as many of them as possible, okay? But um, we will definitely not get to all of them. For all you Drumeo Edge students, for all you who are part of the, the current uh, Drumeo Edge program, we're going to be doing an exclusive Q&A with uh, Cooper on Wednesday, I believe it is. So that's going to be fun. So don't worry, all of your questions, uh, all you guys will uh, get all your questions answered. But um, I had one question. Yes. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll wait. Okay. I'll wait to the question part, because I, I wanted to ask one too. Let's do it. Why can't I? Hey? Hey. <laughs> you know, you're in charge of the chat over there, so you can kind of do whatever you want. Yeah. You can say that someone else asked the question and then ask That's me true. as many questions as you want that yeah. are yours. So <laughs> you can cheat the system. <laughs> awesome, man. Okay, let, let's, let's go.
Great job, man. Thank you. Cool. Okay, we're gonna get to some questions before before we do that. Let's just give away that pair of sticks you just used, if that's all right. Drum me um, those sticks. So let's choose JC Drums one seven nine, Drummer Z or Dragon Slayer X. Whew, the last one is tempting, but I'm gonna go with JC Drummer whatever. JC Drums one seven nine. Go, go. go ahead and email me Jared at Drumio.com. We'll we'll uh, ship you out this pair of new Drumio signature sticks, actually made by Vic Firth. So, <clears throat> cool, man. Man, how does it? This is my question. Yeah. How does it feel to start putting up YouTube videos and now it be like your full time, like you have just a massive YouTube channel and this is what you get to do full time entertaining people behind a kit. Well, I mean, first off, it's incredible. Yeah. To know that people love what I do and watch what I do and, and even some people look up to, to what I do is, is just such an honor. I mean, yeah. it's my dream to be an inspiration and a role model and inspire people to work hard and go after their dreams and have fun, because that's all I did. Like, yeah. I'm not like the best drummer on the entire planet. In fact, I'm, I'm nowhere close to the best drummer. I just do what I love and I love what I do. Right. And so for me to be able to do what I love and love what I do and do it full time is the biggest uh, blessing on the planet. Yeah, that's cool, man. So, like, what, what, uh, actually, I, actually I'll, I won't, I'll ask you my own questions later. Okay, <laughs> we'll go right. to the actual questions now. Uh, this is from Levi the Drummer. He says, hey, Casey, great to have you here at Drumio. I have a lot of questions, but the, mo but the most important is, what would be your number one advice for young, upcoming YouTube drummers? YouTube drummers, okay. Um, well, if you're focusing on YouTube, and that's, that's what you want, I assume you want to grow your channel, you want to... Um, get more viewers, you want people to check out what you do, and, and really you just want to show how much fun you have playing drums and show that to other people. The main thing is to do that. Be yourself. Don't try to be someone else. Don't try and be um, different than what you are. Because I like to say, you're going to be the best you. Like, you can't try and be me, and I can't try and be you. So be yourself, have fun, and be unique. That's one of the coolest things about it is like, if you do something that everyone else has already done a thousand times, it doesn't matter how well you do it, it's gonna be difficult to go anywhere with it. Right. But if you do something new, or if you do it your way, if you do it the way that you like to do it, if, it's, if you have something special, um, that's, that's really the way to get people in, is to do things in your own way. Because yeah. if, if you do things like everyone else, then legitimately, they have a lot of other options. Yeah, to, you kind of get out. lost in the crowd. Yeah. Then. I, I, I always, it's a sales term, but I always say USP, which is unique selling proposition. Mm -hmm. And forget about the selling portion, but what's unique about you? Mm -hmm. find, that, find out what that is and um, use that to your advantage. Yeah, so. like me, it's, it's just the, the way that I play, the, the fun that I have. I have yeah. a passion and I have energy and I have fun when I do it. I don't make it look boring or anything. I just yeah. show you guys what I love doing. Yeah, that's cool. Um, this is from, this is, from Dar Darth Hoffen says, how can I show up to a gig and do it without a chart or any practice time beforehand? Is that even possible? How do you play and, a song without? Yeah, how do I show up? How can I show up to a gig without any charts or practice time beforehand and do it? Uh, well, if you hopefully listen to the song a lot, um, that would help. But if not, um, get the tempo, <laughs> get someone to tell you what style it's in, and then hold down something simple. Like, yeah. don't, don't try and show off, don't try and do anything, but lay down the groove. I mean, as a drummer, we can get away with that. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't know a song, I've, I've had opportunities where I'm playing live with someone and, and someone's like, hey, do this song. And like, I don't know that song. I've never really even heard it before, which yeah. is probably a bad thing. I should probably listen to it. But yeah. some of the band knows it, so we try and play it. So it's like, I don't, if I don't know what exactly to do, I know the speed of the song, you know the tempo, and yeah. you know the style, then just lay it down. Yeah. Lay down that two and four, or that half time, whatever it is that you need to be playing, and yeah. that'll get you through the gig for the most part. Yeah, don't try and do crazy spills or stuff, just yeah. kind of like lay in the pocket. And don't act like you like messed up if you do. Yeah. Like just play it off, you know? Like you can't get, if a mistake happens, there's no way to get past it. You can't go back and rewrite it. It happened, yeah. get over yourself and just keep playing, so. Cool. That works. Uh, this one's from Playmaker. How do you learn so many drum beats to play along to your songs? I only know about four beats to use in pop songs, but I would like to have a bigger library of drum beats and fills to use. Well, the thing is, is like, 
nowadays, for the most part, you aren't really being all that innovative in terms of drumming. Like everything's been done before, it's been done by someone. You can be a little innovative in terms of your playing. You can do a certain sound or a certain way to a new thing, but um, the way to get better at um, learning and, and having different things to play is to focus on other people. Um, listen to your favorite bands, your favorite pop stars, listen to those music and learn how to play those grooves because um, there's a reason that songs are popular, you know? Like, they, like a pop song, even though some people hate pop songs and they, they talk bad about like it's like trashy music or something, the reason that that's popular a lot of times is because uh, that makes you move, it makes you dance, it makes you get into it. Like right. it, you enjoy the, the feeling, it's, it speaks to people. And so listen to those pop songs and learn what speaks to people and, and learn from other people. Mm -hmm. Well, who's your favorite drummer, and who do you listen to for those types of beats? Well, for pop beats, I don't, I don't know exactly who I listen to for pop beats, but mm -hmm. for my favorite drummer um, is Chad Smith. Okay. Um, so I love listening to his grooves. He always comes up with cool stuff. But a guy that comes up with really unique parts is Nathan Followhill at Kings of Leon. Yeah. That guy writes some of the most interesting and cool drum parts. Cool. All right. This is from C, C for Jesus. How do you incorporate the toms into your playing? I really have a hard time figuring this out. And this is one of the questions I was going to ask you too. You do a lot of the the tom like, duh, 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 yeah. duh, duh, right? That so it'd be cool to like maybe give one kind of example or just even demonstrate it slowly what you're doing. Okay. Um, just because I think that's really cool and you you you, you do that a lot mm -hmm. and it sounds like huge and it sounds so cool with all these toms. Yeah. There's a lot to do. Right. Yeah. So what what, uh, what are you doing there? To play it or just yeah, talk about like it? maybe just play a little bit of Zach server and knows what I'm talking about, but maybe okay. just that, that tom fill, and then we can talk a little bit about what it is. All right. So when you're when you're doing this fill, um, I'm going to play a groove a little bit, and then I'm going to to jump into the actual fill, so you can feel it out of a groove. But like. Yeah. So. I slowed it down there a little bit so you could kind of hear it, but... So it's, it's variations of one and two. So like, yeah, I love those, those so, types of fills because it works for like this too. So you just like, moving between two and one really opens it up. Now the kick always stays at one, right. because that, that keeps it easier. You can do it with two, but for the fills that I like to play, it's just So that would be like one E and a two E and a three E and a four. Yeah. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Yeah. That's cool. In a lot of songs, you probably won't be playing it at 16th note speed, you're right. probably playing it like one and two and well, I guess it would still be sixteen. 16 so you, like, you could play it any notes, I think. Yeah, it, it would. But uh, I don't know how it would end up on the four. You'd have to extend certain parts. Yeah. Or whatever. But we'd have to write it out. I'm putting you on the spot here. Sorry <laughs> about that. But, hey, explain <laughs> that uh, that really cool lick that you did. You sometimes these things like you just do them naturally. Mm -hmm. I, I do that all the time, and then I'm like, yeah, what's that doing? I haven't really like thought about it that much. Right. It's just like it feels good to do that, you know? Yeah. Cool. Uh, this is from Bassam. What's the hardest song you've ever played? Oh, um, that's, that's a tough question. Um, yeah. I've played probably like 600 songs um, just on my YouTube channel, um, right. at least over 500. So it's quite a selection there. Um, in terms of technical difficulty, um, some of the hardest drum parts that I've played would be like the Revs drum parts mm -hmm. or um, Neil Peart's drum parts. Um, those guys write really, really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not as much of a metal drummer. Um, a lot of metal stuff has some really, really technical playing in it, like especially yeah. progressive metal, like Periphery or um, those those styles of bands. And so, yeah. um, those those parts are really uh, for me. I guess it'd probably be maybe like even Sevenfold or something like that. Um, yeah. In terms of, I, I guess I, I feel like that's what people talk. That's what they're asking is. Like, what's the most technical song you've played, mm -hmm. or something? Because yeah. for me, like, it's not necessarily the amount of notes that makes it difficult. It's more about like the way that you, like, yeah. pull things off. Cool. This one's from Ricardo Drums. He says, "Hi, 
I just want to know how long it takes you to learn a song with this method. Okay. So, but I, I guess it would change yeah, per song. It does change per song. Um, like, if I can show you real quick, you can probably see this at least a little bit. Um, this is my write up for the country song that I played with the, the backbeat there on the snare drum. And so it's really short, there's not much to it. So on a, a song like that, I literally played through the song probably um, three or four times, and then I was, I was done, I was ready. Um, and so uh, I guess if I'm just going to, to give you, if you focus, if you're really active listening, and then you make use of your practice time, you're not fooling around, you're not messing around, mm -hmm. um, you can learn a song in like 30 minutes maybe. Right. Yeah, there's some quick ways, especially if, like you said, you're active mm -hmm. listening, especially if you write, you're willing to write a roadmap and yeah. kind of get a system for that. I know in Drumeo we have things that we call, um, we call them cheat sheets, which, which are basically a template that we give to all our students, and we, give, we actually give them with all the play-alongs. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, Most of oh, them, no, yeah, I did see the PDFs. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. so there's PDFs, and they're not the actual, like, notated drum charts, not all of them at least, but, uh, but they're generally just like the roadmap. Oh, so basically I could have printed those off instead of doing all the work myself. <laughs> I, he tells me that now. But hey, you needed to practice yeah, how I, to learn I did, songs quickly. I did, and it, and it does help when you write it down. For yeah. real, writing things down will help you. I mean, most people, yeah. but it does, it does help solidify it. This is a good one. This is from OMVK. Uh, what do you look for in a song when choosing a new one? Skill, challenging, YouTube growth, specific drum parts, etc. Well, you, you kind of you kind of nailed it all on the head there. Right. What what I focus on for picking a song is number one, I want a song that I feel like I'm going to make a great cover of. That doesn't necessarily mean that the original drums are written well. That doesn't mean that there's not good original drums. It means that I feel like I'm going to have fun, enjoy and do an awesome job doing the cover. And that's my first and foremost focus because if I don't feel I'm gonna do a great job, if I don't really like what I'm doing, then I'm not gonna do as good of a job on it. But right. past that, um, I do like to do songs that people wanna see. And when you mention YouTube growth, that's basically what that is. Like, yeah. you do songs that people want to watch you do. And so if I like the song and people wanna see me do it, I like to do that. Now past that, I love to do songs where I can do some cool stuff. I'm not necessarily like a show-off drummer in terms of like chopping out all the time. I'm not like trying to gospel chops it up in every song because I'm more about just like energy, passion, groove, and I do fills and stuff as well. So like it's not like I'm, because I'm sure you've, you've seen the videos, you know that it's, uh, I overplay a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, I want it to be like a cool drum part. Like sometimes I come over with cool like crossover parts between the floor toms and the hats. You, you or, want it to be visually yeah, appealing. Visually appealing well too is really cool. The sound um, really, mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. And so, because YouTube is all about the visual appeal. If, mm -hmm. if someone watches your videos, they want to be enjoying watching your videos. So if what you're doing isn't visually appealing and isn't like, you could just have someone listen to it. If they're listening to it, you want it to be sound like appealing, audio appealing, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, was, I was thinking it was a word. It's like an auditory, it's like a band name now, audio appealing, appealing <laughs> audio, but, or a company. But yeah, so it's all about, uh, at that point, like once it's a song people want to hear and you want to play it and you, you enjoy it, then I do try and do some cool stuff with it and, and have fun with it, whether if I'm trying to create my own parts. Cool, man. Awesome. Okay, well, we, we don't have any more time. Oh, questions okay. <laughs> so we got to as, as many of them as we could. Now, for those of you who'd like to, to ask uh, Cooper more questions, like I said, you can go and sign up for the, the free 30-day trial, and you can join us in a few days, and we're going to spend, uh, we'll get to all the questions mm -hmm. at that, that point. So, um, so, yeah, so like I said, go, try out Drumeo, give it a whirl, see, see if you like it. I mean, that's where he, he's, all the songs that... Uh, that Cooper is playing, they're from the Drumio Edge members area, and, and we do this sort of lesson format every day. And so you get, you, you pay like 30 bucks a month, and you get one new one hour lesson every day. So, oh, wow. I think it's a pretty good, pretty good deal. Yeah, that's like getting like 30 private lessons. Well, not private <laughs> lessons, but like 30 lessons yeah. for $30. Yeah, I didn't a even buck know a lesson or whatever. I should probably have studied up on Drumio <laughs> before coming here. And, yeah. Then you get thirty lessons. That's, that's pretty <laughs> cool. Okay, let's let's give away um, let's give away an annual membership. Um, okay, so oh, I will go from right here. Okay, so Denchik three four three 
Jose Cortez or Martin Thompson 2006. Wait, so you're making me pick someone who's going to get a whole year of Dremio instruction? Yeah. Wow, yeah. I'm sorry to the two people I don't pick in advance. Don't hate me. <laughs> what were the names again? Denchik, 343. Three, uh, oh my goodness, what did I just say? Oh no. Cortez. Jose Cortez and what was the other one? I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. Thompson, something Thompson. Oh, Martin Thompson, 2006. Okay. Is that what I said? Yeah. Okay. okay. Martin well. Thompson, 2006. De Denson, Denchik, 343. And... I, I don't know if I've picked a girl so far, so if that's... Jose Cortez. Is that Den like chick, like girl? I don't know. Okay, well, you get it. Cause okay. Denchik, 343. Email me, jared at com, and I'm going to... Uh, give you a free year of Drumio. A year of Drumio sells for, um, goes for 197 bucks, so it's a, it's a pretty good, yeah, pretty good that's, price. That's, yeah, I'm sorry to the other two guys. Uh, my deepest condolences. <laughs> yeah, but you guys can all try it out, and uh, I think you're really going to like it. And just so you guys know about the trial, you do need a credit card, but if, if you don't want to continue your membership after 30 days, you can just go ahead and email support at drumio.com. We'll cancel your account. Let's say you forget to do that, and you're like, oh, I forget to do it, and it billed anyway. You still have, we have a 90-day money-back guarantee. So it could bill for three months, and we'll still give you all your money back if you never did want to sign up. So we're not just there to try and take your money or anything. We really want to provide you with some awesome lessons that you love and that you use. And uh, if you do that, we hope that you're really, really willing to pay. But if, if not, that's totally cool as well. Um, uh, I want to thank a few of the, the sponsors that you yes, have. That's definitely. all right. So Pearl and uh, specifically, well, specifically Pearl. This kit mm -hmm. sounds great. Oh, it's amazing. It's a Pearl Masters kit. Yeah. Um, incredible. And the finish, like this is a gorgeous finish. I'm, yeah. I fell in love with this kit. Yeah. This was lent to us by Brandon Toes. He's actually one of my students. And so. Thank you, Brandon. This is a killer kit. You yeah. are the bomb. Like, <laughs> I want to give you a hug, but you're not here. So um, <laughs> You'll meet him soon. Awesome. Uh, Vic Firth sticks. Both uh, Dremio has got our Vic Firth stick, and you use the Buddy Rich stick. Yes, these are the picture. Buddy Rich signatures. Yeah. Um, and then Zildjian cymbals, obviously. Uh, Remo drum heads, drum light, which we don't have the lights in yeah. these drums. And uh, 1964 ears. Brandon needs to get some lights in his drums. I don't know if these look good well, with lights. Hey, anything looks good with lights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It, these are very classy drums. You don't yeah. have to get lights, Brandon. Cool. Now, thank you so much thank for coming you. out, man. Thank you. It's been a blast. So, it's been fun. So just so you guys know, this, is, this live event is, is one of the things that we're doing. We're actually going to be filming some more videos, some covers uh, with Cooper, and so you'll see kind of other stuff come out on YouTube as well. Obviously, we're doing the Q&A for Drumio Edge students, um, and we're filming an exclusive course with you that's mm -hmm. going to go in the Drumio Courses section, which is kind of our core curriculum for Drumio. Uh, and the last thing you're going to be doing is playing the song uh, Tone Deaf. Yes. It's again written by Nate Savage, a guitar player, and this is a drum you'll play along as well. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 